I don't know, Chip. I'm not. Oh, I see what's going on. I got to make it a, make it a, a sorry. I got to make it public. Oh, okay. Let me um, grab my poor baby. Okay, I can see you on my page. And it's a 10 minute, del it's a maybe like a five minute second delay. Do you want to, can you tag me? Is it possible to? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I just did. Realize I'm on mute. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Um, people are started or in the uh, live. Let me see if I can make you a co-host. I don't know what I'm doing. I won't. I won't. All right. Yeah. Make me a co-host. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> Let me help you. All right. I'm. I have to go get my baby. I'll be right back. All right.
Okay, I'm admitting everybody in right now. It's seven o'clock. All right, fantastic. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. We are also Facebook Live, everybody. Yay! So we're in the whole world of Facebook. Isn't that fun? <laughs> So you'll be watched forever and ever and ever and ever and ever on Mark, whatever Zucker, whatever his name is. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna give it a few, another minute or so before we just jump right in. Wanna thank those who have already um, joined us, those who are joining us on Facebook Live, thank you. Again, my name is Aisha M. Wilson and we are joined here by, Mr. Greenwich. <laughs> Where's your baby? Show the baby. Oh, he is chilling like All right, all right. So I want you to know the baby is in effect too. So yes. if you see her jump off camera, you know what you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> Mommy duties. Oh, see how it goes already? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, George Chip Greenwich with Greatest Minds. We're so glad to be here today. And as you guys know, well, September 6th is right around the corner. This summer went by fast and we see signs all over the place. And so hopefully this will go viral as we plan it to be so everyone can share information and get to see people. We know this summer has been an on and off, lots of hot air, lots of beautiful cookouts, lots of different events. But um, we also wanted to do something um, recorded so we can actually share with people as well all around so people can share this for the next couple of days and all that other stuff. And also people get to see it at their own leisure. So we're very excited about that as well. So I'm so excited to be here, uh, Chip Greenwich um, with Miss Aisha M. Wilson, right? I had to be clear. You're on mute, you're on mute, it's all right. <laughs> yes, thank you, Aisha M. Wilson. And um, thank you, Chip, for joining and, and being a part of this opportunity. And thank you to all the candidates. As Chip said, we are one week away from the primary. And this is an important opportunity to get out the vote. And we thought that it was a great idea to make sure that we hear from the candidates. I'm still indecisive, I'm indecisive, excuse me, and undecided on who I am going to pick, who are my top choices for all of the important um, races that are before us. And I know that you are too. So I wanted to make sure that we get these folks out here, let them tell us about who they are and why they are the best candidate for this role and position, because our future is about you know, it's holding them down and holding them accountable um, to the roles that they are going to be um, playing after um, November 8th um, and in the new year, excuse me. But the primary is super important. The primary is one week away on September 6th. Um, we right now can get out the vote. Make sure that you hit the polls. Early voting is, is now through Friday. Um, so make sure that you know where you are supposed to go and um, vote early. Make sure you know where your polling stations are for that great stuff. And right now, as you know, my fan is on and um, I feel great and my AC is on. And as you see, Miss Aisha's Beyonce is going on with her hair flopping. Look at that in the fan. So show everybody how we do. <laughs> so it's good to have everybody on here today. Um, we're going to wait two more minutes and then we'll get started. Right. Sounds good. And I'm letting people in as we speak all the time. So, Ms. Aisha, I would love for you to um, introduce all the four uh, coordinating organizations and then um, set the ground rules for the day. And then after that, um, we'll get with our first candidate. We'll do that in one minute. And for the record, my red cup has Diet Snapple. Zero sugar. Sugar. 
it takes a while to get used to, but it's okay. It is okay. You know, everyone try um, zero Coke or zero calorie Coke. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Zero, zero Coke and zero Pepsi. It's not that bad. It, the first one was bad. Remember the new Coke back in, um, I'm dating myself. The new Coke back in 87, 80, remember that? It was horrible. Well, I definitely want to shout out our sponsors. We do have Greatest Minds, um, the Greater Boston Association of Black Social Workers, the YWCA Cambridge, and the Cambridge branch of the NAACP. So we are grateful to our sponsors who, who um, have been sharing this and making sure that their networks know to come out and join us. Okay. And if you can do a quick, I bet you have your list up. Can you tell all the people, we have a two minutes or one minute, can you just name all the candidates that will be here today? Yes. Go so for, for the Lieutenant Governors, we have Rep. Tammy Govia. We have Mayor Drim, um, Kim Driscoll. We have Senator Eric Lesser. For a District Attorney Plymouth County, we'll have um, Reverend Rasan Hall. Secretary of State, we have Tanisha Sullivan. Auditor Chris Dempsey and Senator Diana Dezolio. Um, pardon me if I'm mispronouncing your name. For Senator Second Suffolk District, we have Rep. Nika Elgato, Reverend Menard um, Culpepper. Yep. Thank you. Rep. Liz Miranda, James Grant, Diane, former Senator Diane Wilkerson. For Attorney General, we have Shannon Liz Reardon, Andrea Campbell. Scroll down here. And what's your pen? 1741. For the computer? All right, if we can make yeah. sure that folks joining us are muted, thank you and welcome. <laughs> All right. This, for, this is really Suffolk community. County, for Suffolk County Sheriff, we have Sandy Zamor um, Kalexi. For Senator for 2nd Plymouth and Norfolk District, we have Katrina Hulk Larman. And for Suffolk County DA, we have DA Kevin Hayden. After 8 p.m. on the Republican side, that's for the Democratic candidates. We have Auditor Anthony Amori. We have Lieutenant Governor Leah Allen, Secretary of State um, Rayla Campbell, and Attorney General James um, McMahon running for those seats. So we are excited. We have a packed house and we want to definitely make sure that we get this show on the road. It is 7.08 and I am going to set my clock to make sure my timer to make sure that each candidate has their respected times. And we are going to start off with Rep. Tammy Govia. And I do apologize if I'm saying your name incorrectly. I'm going to set the timer for three minutes and you have the floor. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. You did say my name correctly. I am Tammy Govea running for Lieutenant Governor. Been in this race for 15 months, really crisscrossing the state and hearing what the key issues are. I grew up in the city of Lowell and that really inspired in me a desire to give back to my community. It's why I've been a social worker for the last 25 years leading on uh, issues related to the environment, to housing, as well as to the opioid crisis. I got into this race because our privatized response was leaving far too many people behind, particularly our black, brown, low income and immigrant neighbors. That's why I got into this race in June of last year, based on my background as a social worker and as a doctor of public health. And every single day that I have been in this campaign, I have been talking about the need for us to put the health, the well being, and the dignity of every single resident at the heart of decision making. We are facing huge issues and we are just barely scratching the surface of how to address and solve those issues once and for all. So as I've been crisscrossing the state, I keep hearing about the housing crisis, mental health and human services, hearing about childcare and climate change as well as COVID response and recovery. So I have a vision, I'm the only one in this race who really has a vision for being a new type of Lieutenant Governor to meet the moment that we are in to drill down to the root causes 
of what's really driving our housing crisis, our mental health and human services crisis, our childcare crisis, climate change environment, and our COVID response. As a Lieutenant Governor, I will lean into my experience, my professional experience, as well as my lived experience. I've been a single mom for 14 years. So a lot of the financial struggles that families are facing every single day, the stress, the strain, the worry, the shame, the isolation that comes with financial security, I don't only know it as a professional with a background in social work and public health. I have lived that life. I have lived in housing that is not humane. I have had to steal from Peter to pay Paul to pay off medical debt that I incurred because I was underinsured. I had to go and ask friends to borrow money, to put gas in my car and to buy a gallon of milk. Those are the kinds of perspectives and that I will lean into as the next Lieutenant Governor to really put people first when we're making decisions, when we're designing programs, when we're passing policies, when we're passing budgets. And what I'm committed to doing is not only leaning into the expertise and the role that our municipal leaders play, but getting out and talking to everyday people about the challenges and the barriers that they are facing. Because folks, you all and folks who are everyday average people are the ones who know what the barriers are. You are able to inform decision-making and thank getting- Thank you so to much. To thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry to cut you, we appreciate you. That's yes. okay. I'll put information in the chat. I hope you'll join us in this campaign. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. All thank right, you. we are going thank on so to- yeah, yeah, please, yeah, please drop your information in the chat so people get in contact with you and your websites. Thank you. Absolutely. Next, we have Mayor Jim, um, Kim Driscoll, followed by Senator Eric Lesser. Thanks, Aisha, and thanks everyone for having me. Uh, I'm Kim Driscoll, I'm the mayor of Salem. I appreciate you letting us practice seatbelt democracy, leaving from one event to another. Um, it's something we've all gotten used to this campaign cycle. So um, as I mentioned, I'm Kim Driscoll, I'm the mayor of Salem. I've been fortunate to be the mayor in my community for the last 16 years. Really grateful for the opportunity to live in and lead a community that's very welcoming and inclusive in a place that I've been able to raise my family. Um, serving as mayor is not my first foray into local government. I actually worked for the city of Chelsea as they came out of receivership, for serving first as their chief legal counsel, and then later as their deputy city manager. Really taught me the value of good government, and frankly, who pays the price when we have failures in leadership? I was grateful and proud to be part of a team at Chelsea City Hall who brought back renewed investment, renewed accountability, and renewed engagement in a city that had been really down on its knees. But I'd always lived in Salem. I'm actually not a native of Salem or of Massachusetts. I'm a Navy brat. My dad uh, was a career Navy man. I was born in Hawaii. My mom is from Trinidad. She was born in Grenada, grew up in Trinidad. So we moved around a lot when I was younger. I came to Salem to go to college and frankly never left. Fell in love with the community, fell in love with my husband, Nick. And as I said, we're fortunate to be raising our three kids there. So I was living in Salem in 2005 and saw a real need for action in my hometown a place that had some amazing assets, but it felt like we took two steps forward and one step back. So I ran for mayor intent on improving city services, making government operate in a more open and transparent way, professionalizing the sorts of services we offer to constituents. Um, 16 years later, Salem is a hip, historic, vibrant destination for visitors and residents alike. We've made historic investments in schools and parks and infrastructure. Mayors like me have been on the front lines of not only leading sort of our communities, but leading COVID response and recovery, working to strengthen our schools, trying to address the affordable housing crisis, uh, working on the climate uh, crisis that we know impacts communities both at the coast and throughout Massachusetts. Um, I like to say mayors are part of the get stuff done wing. The reason, uh, the reason I'm so excited about the opportunity to serve as Lieutenant Governor is I know that no city or town can make it alone. We need thriving communities, but you need a strong state partner to achieve that. I hope as your next Lieutenant Governor to bring what I call the get stuff done branch of government, the government responsible for educating your kids, keeping your neighborhood safe, investing in those places where you make memories to the corner office. As mayor, you have to make decisions every day for friends and neighbors and people you're going to see the next day. It makes you a better listener, it makes you more accountable, and it gives you a sense of urgency of tackling our most urgent challenges. I'm fortunate to have a ton of endorsements in this race from Labor, from Planned Parenthood, from the Mass Women's Political Caucus, from Emily's List. I'd be thrilled to have your consideration. As we move toward a new administration, we're going to have to tackle these issues, and I have the executive experience to partner with our next governor and get stuff done. 
All right, you had like two more seconds left. Thank you for being right on time. Um, so we are going to, uh, Senator Eric Lesser um, unfortunately sent his regrets for he will not be able to join us. Is Rasan Hall, Reverend Hall, are you in the Zoom? Are you on the Zoom? Yes, I see you. All right, so we are gonna go to Reverend Rasan Hall followed by Tanisha Sullivan, then Chris Dempsey. All right, Reverend Hall, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you to the sponsors of this event. Uh, my name is Rasan Hall, and I'm running for Plymouth County District Attorney. Uh, apologies in advance, I'm in transit between two events. So for those of you all who have motion sickness, you might wanna close your eyes. Uh, I am running to reclaim the spirit of justice because for too long, in this system, there have been too many injustices. I've seen them in my life personally, but also as a prosecutor and a civil rights attorney and working for the ACLU, as well as being an ordained reverend, ministering to families who have been on both sides of the criminal legal system, whether it's having a loved one who's been a victim of violence or having one who's been ensnared and entangled in the system. Um, that ministry has taken place over the years at St. Paul AME Church uh, there in Cambridge, uh, where my pastor is the Reverend Dr. Ellis I. Washington. Uh, but I just think that there is a time for something new in this system that looks at treating people with dignity and respect, particularly victims and survivors of violent crime. Uh, increasing the level of transparency and accountability in the system because the residents of Plymouth County deserve to know what's being done and said in our names and on our tax dollars. We need to be intentional about addressing the racial disparities in the system. They just won't go away on their own. There need to be policies and initiatives to address them. We also need to be intentional about taking a harm reduction approach for people who are struggling with substance use disorder and mental health issues, making sure that they get the treatment and services that they need. And lastly, engaging the community so that all of our community partners and residents and people with lived experience are participating in the work of the DA's office, but also making sure that we're getting better outcomes for the people who are going through the system. This is work that I deeply believe in. I see it as a part of my calling to service for the various communities that I'm a part of, but I also see that this is something that I cannot do alone. And so it is with your support and your help and encouragement and prayers that we can get this done. To learn more about me and the campaign platform I'm running on, you can go to my campaign website, hallforda.com. That's hall, H-A-L-L, -L, the number four, da.com. You can also follow me on social media, Instagram and Twitter is, or excuse me, Instagram and Facebook, Hall for DA and Twitter is Rasan D. Hall. So thank you all again for this time and for bringing this forum together for the, uh, uh, the electorate to learn more about these very important races that are happening throughout the Commonwealth and especially making sure that we elect someone who will reclaim the spirit of justice here in Plymouth County. Thank you all and good evening. Fantastic, thank you, Reverend Hall. Um, we are gonna go to, all right. We have next, uh, Tanisha Sullivan. Tanisha in the space? Yes, I believe, I'm yes. Here. Okay, thank you. Followed by Chris Dempsey and then Senator Diana uh, DeZoglio. Thank you. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, it is so good to be in the space. Chip and Aisha, thank you so much for convening us. I am Tanisha Sullivan. I'm running for Secretary of State here in the Commonwealth. This is the office that I believe really can and should be our chief democracy office at a time when democracy is truly on the line, at a time when our democracy is being torn apart at its seams, we here in Massachusetts should be a beacon for the rest of the nation. And quite frankly, that means we've got a lot of work to do. We need a Secretary of State who is proactive and engaged, connected to our communities, working alongside our communities to help increase voter participation, to help ensure that we have greater transparency in our government, and also an office that is focused on tackling economic inequality. The Secretary of State's office is the chief elections office. It is the chief 
Public Information Office. And yes, it is the office that if you want to do business in Massachusetts, you must go to and through. This office has tremendous responsibility during these very troubling times in our democracy, and there is great opportunity just waiting to be tapped. I grew up in Brockton. I am the daughter of a public school educator. My dad spent 40 years in the Boston public schools, and my mother is a small business owner. She started three businesses from our kitchen table in Brockton. I am a practicing attorney. I'm now in my 20th year of corporate legal practice. I've had the opportunity to work in our public schools and the honor of serving as the volunteer president for the NAACP in Boston. I am so grateful for the support that we've received um, in this race. Those who believe that Massachusetts can lead, those who believe that this moment demands more, that we across Massachusetts deserve more, and most importantly, that together we can deliver more for residents across Massachusetts to help improve quality of life. I'm asking for your support in this upcoming primary, Tuesday, September 6th. I am the endorsed candidate uh, in the Democratic race. Um, I'm proud to have the endorsement of the Mass Dems, alongside, of course, our Congresswoman Ayanna Pressley, so many leaders across uh, the city of Cambridge, including uh, your mayor symbol, your past mayor, Edenie Simmons and, and Ken Reeves, and of course, um, school committee woman, uh, Aisha Wilson, who's on the line today. Thank you again, um, Cambridge, for the support that you have given to this campaign. Um, I look forward to working with you. If you'd like to learn more, please visit my website, TanishaSullivan.com, to learn more and to find out how you can get involved. Thank you so very much. Good night. Thank please, you. Uh, Ms. Sullivan, please put your information in the chat if you can, so we can have uh, make sure that people can follow up with you. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So we are going to go on to Chris Dempsey and then Senator um, DiZoglio. Thank you. Aisha and George and everyone else involved in planning this event, thank you so much for the opportunity to join you. I also want to give a special hello to former Mayor Reeves. Mayor, it's great to see you on here as well. I'm Chris Dempsey, and I'm running to be your next state auditor. I'm the son of public school teachers my parents met while teaching at the Martin Luther King School in Grove Hall in Boston. They were placed in adjoining classrooms and they fell in love. And I saw through the course of their career that they were digging into their own pockets to pay for school supplies for their students, as we know public school teachers do to this day across the Commonwealth. That's not right and it led me to a career in public service. I served as Assistant Secretary of Transportation for Governor Deval Patrick. While I was there, I co-founded the MassDOT program that created all the smartphone apps that tell you in real time when your bus or your train will arrive. And I was actually a Cambridge resident when I started that program and I'm still a bus rider, a regular number one bus, uh, 43 bus and many other buses. Um, so uh, I'm a public transit rider as are many of you. I've also worked outside of government to stand up to protect the public interest as the co-founder of the grassroots group, No Boston Olympics. We went up against the corporate interests that were trying to push an Olympic bid that was gonna require all of us to cover 100% of the Olympic cost overruns. I'm so proud in this race to be endorsed by all nine members of the Cambridge City Council. If you're in Cambridge, you know they don't agree on much. And the fact that they're united behind my candidacy is really an honor. Also endorsed by the Mass Democratic Party, by incumbent state auditor Suzanne Bump, by Boston Mayor Michelle Wu, and by the Boston Globe. As auditor, I'll make the office a national leader on climate by making it the first in the country to incorporate carbon accounting into our audits. And we'll tackle tough issues like reform of the Massachusetts State Police with a 15 point plan. I live in the first floor of a triple decker about two and a half blocks from where I grew up and where my public school teacher parents still live with my amazing wife, Anna. And Anna and I are looking forward to starting a family together. We want that to be in a Massachusetts that is the best that it can be. And that means making Massachusetts state government the best that it can be by making it more transparent, more accountable, more efficient and more fair. And that is why I'm running for this important and essential role to be a, a public servant leader to all of you to make our state government work better. 
So honored again to join with you all tonight and to have the support of so many across Cambridge. I'm Chris Dempsey, running to be your next state auditor, and I ask for your vote. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Please um, put your information in the chat. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, lost my screen. Who's next? So we have Senator um, Diana um, DiZoglio, followed by Rep. Nika um, Elgato, followed by Reverend um, Milliard Culpepper. Thank you. Is Rep, um, I'm sorry, is Senator DiGaglio, are you here, Senator? Let me see, I don't see her. All right, we are going to, is, all right, is Rep Mika Elgato here? No. Let's just. Are you sure we are we right on time or what we are, are we? right on time? Okay, so we might have to move a couple of people around. Yeah, so let's see who is. Give me one second. Oh, Senator's on coming on now. All right, fantastic. Thank you. All right, is she in? I don't see her. Senator Diana um, Diesel. Hey everybody, sorry about that. I'm just having little connection issues, but we are good. No, okay. no worries, welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I feel like I've been saying your name wrong, but go right ahead and you have the floor. Three minutes starts now. Awesome, thank you so much everybody for coming on tonight to learn more about candidates. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you, Aisha, for your support in this race. I really, really appreciate it. Can't do it without the support of folks from our communities who have been working in the trenches every single day. Uh, my name is Diana DiZoglio. I am a state senator running for state auditor. I'm running because working families like ours deserve access to and accountability from our state leaders and state agencies, regardless of our family background, bank balance, or zip code. Uh, you might have seen my story a couple of times by now, hopefully, but I was born to a 17-year-old single mom. I grew up housing insecure. I cleaned houses and waitressed my way through community college and worked hard to earn scholarships to become the first in my family to graduate. Without the investments of others, I would not have had the opportunities I did. So I know how important it is that investments made in the state government through your tax dollars are taken seriously and used wisely because every wasted dollar puts another child's future opportunities at risk. And I don't need to tell anybody in this virtual room this, but there are enough barriers to access. I wanna ensure that Beacon Hill isn't one of those barriers, but right now Massachusetts continues to be ranked by most good government groups as the least transparent and accessible of any state government in the entire nation. We're not subject to open meeting laws or exempt to public records laws. Committee votes are not public. Taxpayer funded non disclosure agreements continue to protect powerful politicians and silence government workers about harassment, discrimination, and abuse, and power is centralized into the hands of a few. Put on top of that, that this administration's policies currently feed a self sustaining status quo where people with generational access to power prosper, their friends who look and sound like them are rewarded, and the most vulnerable people are pushed aside and marginalized. I'll be an auditor who opens up state government to everyone and shifts the balance of power back to the workers. I've been a small businesswoman. I was chief of staff at the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts, working with our friends in labor. That's why I'm proud to have the endorsement as well of the Massachusetts Teachers Association, uh, the Massachusetts Nurses Association, AFL-CIO, EMILY's List, the Coalition for Social Justice, and many other organizations across the board. 
And I want to take the years that I've spent leading community programs at various nonprofits and the work that I've done serving in the legislature now for going on 10 years, going line by line in that state budget, fighting for working families to the auditor's office. I have the proven track record of tackling tough issues on important matters such as climate change, environmental justice, education, and access to health care. And I've also led the charge in the state Senate on issues of transparency, because if there's one thing I've learned during my time in the legislature, but more so as a former self-employed house cleaner, it's that sunlight is actually the best disinfectant. And my comprehensive social justice and equity audit plan shines a light on where we need to start making bold and meaningful changes so that all families in Massachusetts have a seat at the table, regardless of our family background, our bank balance, and our zip code. I'm humbled to be here tonight, uh, super excited for the opportunity to hopefully earn your support. Please check out my uh, audit plan. It can be found on my website, and I think that my time is up. Thank you so much for the opportunity tonight. Have a great night, y'all. Diana DeZoglio for State Auditor. Please, Diana, uh, please put all your information in the chat. You can do a little uh, paragraph, so we're going to cut and paste this and send this out to everybody as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. All right. Is Rep Nika in the building? Hello. I am Hi. here. All right. And we're going to follow by Reverend um, Culpepper and then um, James Grant. Okay. So that's our order. Thank you. Nika, you go. It's your turn. Three minutes. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, really been wonderful to run for state senate. I'm currently a state representative, and I represent uh, all of Mission Hill and parts of Rothendale, and uh, parts of a little bit of Brookline even, and parts of JP. And so to the Boston side, I'd be able to add four beautiful neighborhoods, Hyde Park, Mattapan, Dorchester, and Roxbury to that. And these are neighborhoods where I have worked for the 30 years prior to becoming a state rep. So it's kind of a coming home for me that I'm excited about. In my district, we have tried some experiments that have been really successful around bringing youth jobs in for people up to age 26, around targeting those jobs to people who are resistant to traditional workforce development because of trauma or for other reasons. Really working with the Boston Housing Authority and other uh, affordable housing groups to make sure that we're targeting the people most in need. We've also made sure to incorporate our Main Street businesses, not only into where those jobs go, but also into shaping my policy during COVID. And so we wanted to make sure that our small businesses weren't just getting big picture policy, like small business assistance, like where do those $40 million go? I wanted to make sure that those earmarks as well as that other money went to businesses I could name. And so meeting with them every uh, week for a couple of years and then monthly once we got the hang of things helped me understand the needs not only of our tenants, but also of property owners, also of homeowners. I'm not sure what's going on with the sound there, but I don't think that's me. Harvey, <laughs> if everybody can please mute. Well, it turns out the CDC agrees with you. This morning, the CDC director. I will continue. Thank you. All right, Nikki, you, oh, have 20, you have additional 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. So, you know, I grew up uh, with poverty. We had evictions. My parents both struggled with addiction. They are both now in recovery for 15 and 30 years, respectively. But I'm going to be 50 next year. And so that means that as a child, I went through a lot of the things that the kids are going through who are the most marginalized from our government and their families as well. And yet, uh, because of not only the support and faith of family, people of faith in my, com in my community, but also the networks of folks who invested in me, I know what investing in a community can produce. MIT, Harvard, uh, BU Law, these are accomplishments that mean nothing to me unless every kid has access to them. And, and also recognizing that there are many pathways to the pursuit of happiness and to success. It can look like trade. It can look like starting a small business. It could look like owning a business that creates equity for you to own multiple businesses. And so our mission and vision is all about building generational wealth but doing that in practical ways. And so I have passed a number of policies already in housing, in economic development, in workforce development, in um, uh, 
supporting people who are formerly incarcerated and getting into housing. And we have a lot more to do. So I really humbly ask for your vote because I'm passionate. There's vision. And building your leadership is why I exist. I've spent 30 years doing it, whether running statewide programs or working on the street. And so I do ask that you give me your vote. But recognize September 7th is going to be a lot of work when you get me in the Senate because it's your work that we're going to amplify your voice, your power at the state house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Um, thank you so much. So we are going to move on to Reverend Culpepper, followed and, by yeah. uh, James Grant, followed by former Senator Diane Wilkerson. And please, uh, uh, Team Nika, please put your um, information in the chat so we can have um, reference for you, your um, follow-up information. Yes, and also if folks can please stay muted, that will be really helpful just so that it's not impacting um, our candidates as they share the greatness about their work and um, plan work. So please stay muted. Thank you. Reverend Culpepper. Where is he? Where are you? Okay, you seem to be unmuted. We can't see you, um, but we also can't hear you. So, Okay, while Reverend Culpepper is trying to get unmuted, um, we're going to move on to James Grant and then come back to Reverend Culpepper. So James Grant, we are gonna move forward to you. Thank you. Oh, yes, hi, how you doing? My name is James Grant, I'm running for Senate and I'm originally from Barbados. I grew up here in in Boston, I spent most of my time in Boston. I had a mother that worked three jobs, taught me the importance of responsibility, independency, and a lot of discipline that got me where I'm at today. Um, she worked she worked three jobs, um, two full-time jobs and a part-time job to make sure that I was okay. As I grew older, she made sure that she cut those jobs down. Um, also, I was also a student at Northeastern. In my third year of Northeastern, I was recruited to go into law enforcement. I would, they call that a middle of year. I also graduated from Roxbury Community College in UMass Boston. As I pursue that as a, as a career, one of the things that I would like to say is that I was also, I love Boston and I love the diversity that exists in Boston's culture and in the communities and neighborhoods. Um, that was a great experience. One of the things that happened to me was busing. I was one of the students that had to go to school on busing, Boston Great Historic Busing. And that alone uh, taught me the, the responsibilities of fighting for equality. When I was young, I worked on the Bill Owens campaign, um, Royal Boland campaign as well as I got older. I started to work on Elizabeth Warren's campaign, Deval Patrick. I had the, the CIA, the security department with the CIA and the, and the FBI when Deval was running the second term in Boston. I was also one of the pub, um, um, school teachers for Boston Public School. And I was certified to teach middle school and high school. And at that period of time, I also had to finance the materials that the, that the students need. And sometimes I realized that if a child was wearing a, a t-shirt in the winter time, three or four times that that child didn't have a coat. So I had to go out and purchase clothing and other um, resources for the children and also for my classroom. I'm running because the one thing that I've come to understand and even listening people on, listening to the candidates on my space is that Boston needs strong leadership. I think America needs strong leadership throughout, throughout America. And I think that I, based on my um, law enforcement experience, my educational experience, working as an activist in the community, I think that prepared me very well to run for the office of Senate. 
and to contribute to the, the, the lifestyle of this community. Um, we have a, a serious issue with housing. We have serious issues with crime. We have serious issues with people trying to find finances to make every day and every, every day meet. So one of the things that we have to do is that we have to pull together and collaborate together as candidates and that's running for office and make sure that we work for the best interests of the people. Thank you so much, James Grant. Please make sure that you put your information into the chat. Um, we are going to, um, as we know, candidates are out there. They are running. It's one week left to the votes, um, to the primary. So we know that candidates are multitasking and we appreciate everyone for joining us. Um, so Reverend Culpepper will be with us in just a short while. So we are going to move on. Um, and I also want to make sure that I send our regrets from a few of our candidates who are unable to join us this evening. So we have um, Attorney General Maura Haley, who's running for governor, was una unable to join us this evening, and as well as um, Rep. Liz Miranda. Unfortunately, she has COVID and she is not doing, she's not feeling well at all today. Um, and so we want to send our well wishes to her and make sure that she um, um, gets well and is able to continue in this run in this race. All right, so thank you again. And we are going to, is former Senator Diane Wilkerson, are you on the call? I don't think I see. Nope, I don't see she's on yet. Okay. We are a little early. Is Shannon Liz Reardon? Are you on the call? We're a little before, we're a little ahead of time. So we want to. Okay. All right. So let's um let's just let's pause. Do a commercial break. Yeah, I was like, let's pause and do a commercial break. <laughs> All right, let me get everyone to see each other. Oh, look how everyone looks on here. Can everyone see each other? Yes. Yes, more faces. I see Louis Lisa. I see Romaine. Guys, what's up, Romaine? I see Gail. I see Barbara Gibbs. Hello. I see Johnny. Hey. I know Miss Johnny, my mom's friend. <laughs> I see my mayor, Ken, Ken Reeves. I see, I see Ken President Reeves learning, Reeves. learning the phone with his big fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. I see Miss Wardis. Hi, Miss Wardis. Hi. All right. I see Stephen Brown. I see Shannon Liz Reardon. Yes. Sarah Flint. Hello. All right. We're also on Facebook Live to everybody. So um, this will be forever in Mark Zuckerberg world. So be ready. Be ready. All yes. Right. You can find it on. Um... I know you can find it on my page, Aisha Wilson, Aisha M. Wilson. You can also chip it's on your page as well, right? Yes, or is it on Greatest, greatest Mind? Mind. And okay. also Reverend Culpepper has just joined us. All right. So we are going to go to Reverend Culpepper and then Shannon Liz Reardon. Good evening. Culpepper, Good evening. You have three minutes. Thank Thanks you. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, George. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk about some of the my plans that I would implement as state senator. I apologize for being late, but I was on my way here and I got a call that a 92 year old member of the church was having a birthday party. So you know what I had to do? I know what you had to do. <laughs> I had to run and find her some roses and uh, get her a card and uh, stop by and just, I had to sing happy birthday to everyone over 90 years old, I sing happy birthday to them. So I had to sing happy birthday to her. And so then I said, let me make it to jump on this important uh, meeting tonight. My name is Minyard Culpepper and I'm running for the State Senate of the Second Suffolk Dis District. Oh. And I'm running for Senate because- uh, is, I've been quite, quite proud of Sorry, we want to make sure everyone is muted. Thank you. 
I'm running for the state Senate because I'm aware and I see and even feel the housing crisis that we're in. And after working at 27, at HUD for 27 years, after being regional counsel for the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for 27 years, one of the things that we do at HUD is we have data and we have statisticians and we have economists. And they look at this data and they uh, determine what programs should be implemented based on the data that we see. We've seen data from across the country. And as one that has had 27 years of looking at data uh, from the experts and looking at Boston and looking at the housing crisis that we're in, I decided to leave HUD in February to run for this state Senate seat. And I believe because of my housing experience, because of the issues that I see, especially with regard to gentrification, I put together a gentrification plan. I decided after some of the successes that I had at HUD, one of the major successes that I had was the demonstration disposition program, where we took Academy homes, we demolished it, tore it down, built it back brand new, no city money, no state money, transferred ownership to the tenants. The tenants at Academy homes now own Academy homes. Canfield Gardens, they're now Canfield Estates. We did the same thing, demolished them, built them back brand new, transferred ownership to the tenants. The Tenant Association owns Canfield Gardens. And when you look at the apartments on Seaver Street, you'll see they've been renovated. Some of them have changed their names. We renovated those apartments, transferred ownership to the Tenant Association. That's what I call the stabilization plan because they are the owners forever. They don't have to worry about getting a rent increase that's more than they can afford. They don't have to worry about getting an eviction notice. I wanna do the same thing on a state level. I wanna, as state senator, I wanna file legislation to implement, just like Congress implemented the dem dis demonstration disposition legislation. I want state legislation to create a state demonstration disposition program. And what that would do, we would take apartment complexes like Franklin, Hill. When you look at Franklin Field, part federal, part state subsidized, take Franklin Field, demolish it, build it up brand new, transfer ownership to the tenants. I don't see any reason why the tenants can't own Franklin Field, put in a good management company like we did the other demonstration disposition programs. Give them Thank some hope. Thank you so much. Give them Reverend some opportunities. Pepper. How much time? How much time, Aisha? Oh, time is up. Thank you. Oh, 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 I didn't see a timer. And so, oh, sorry. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. I put it in the chat and my apologies if you okay. didn't see it. But, you know, if you want to wrap up, I'll give you 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Thank you. And so, you never give a reverend 20 seconds. I'm going to let you know. All right. It's another four. <laughs> my health I think policy. God will pay it forward if I do this. So, I think it's only right. I think it's only right. I need my blessings. And my housing policy, I have three parts to it. You can go on my website, you can look at it. I'm the one that, even though my opponents have talked about safety, I'm the one walking the streets, working with the gang kids that when tensions are high, I'm the one that in the midst common tensions. I'm the one that got gang kids out of the gangs and into full-time jobs. When you talk about economic development, I'm the one that did the demonstration disposition program, home ownership. And so look, I thank you for giving me uh, the time to talk to you tonight. Uh, we can talk. I've been knocking doors, meeting voters. I'm sure I'll meet some of you, but Minyard Culpepper for State Senate, I'm in it to win it. And when I win, we all win. I'm not leaving anyone behind. When I win, we all win. Thank you, Chip and Aisha, for just giving me a few minutes. You know, it's hard to give a preacher three minutes, but thank you anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much, Reverend. And um, please put your information into the chat so folks know how to find you and information more about your platform. Thank you. Thank you. All Let right, ask, it's uh, former Senator uh, Diane Wilkerson on the call. Okay, we are going to go to um, Shannon Liz Reardon, followed by Andrea Campbell. Thank you, Shannon. Three minutes. All right, thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, uh, my name is Shannon Liz Reardon. I am so honored to be here. I'm very excited about running to be your next attorney general. I have spent my career taking on the biggest challenges and winning huge results for regular people. For the last 23 years, I have been 
at the forefront of taking on some of the largest corporations in America and winning. I've gotten more than half a billion dollars recovered for working people. I've represented workers, I've represented unions, I've taken on some of the largest corporations in America like FedEx, Starbucks, Uber, Amazon, IBM, my alma mater, Harvard University, which I've sued four times, and I've won. I've taken on cases where I have fought for and won for waitresses, janitors, Uber drivers, construction workers, firefighters, strippers. And through this work, I have helped develop our laws to better and more fairly serve the people. I've been a civil rights lawyer for my whole career. I have taken on systemic discrimination cases. Um, I got a case against Uber for discriminating against drivers through its, um, its discriminatory customer rating system, um, which has a disproportionate impact on black and brown drivers. I'm the only candidate in this race who's an actual practicing lawyer. I'm the only one who has run a law firm. I am really looking forward to using the experience, the skills, and the passion that I put into fighting for working people and, and helping all of the people of Massachusetts. I am so proud to have the support of Senator Elizabeth Warren, Boston mm -hmm. Mayor Michelle Wu, as well as the former Mayor Kim Janey in this race. I'm also proud to have the endorsement of the Massachusetts AFL-CIO and more than 50 labor unions representing more than a half a million working people across Massachusetts. I'm so honored and excited about all the momentum that our campaign is getting. And I um, ask you all to please check me out, compare my resume side by side with that of the other remaining candidate in this race and ask yourself, if you had to hire a lawyer, who would you hire? I think you would wanna hire the more experienced lawyer who knows how to win in court. I've won jury trials. I've won appeals. I've run a law firm. Um, I've been widely recognized as one of the top, most experienced, successful lawyers in the country. I look forward to and would be so honored to be able to serve you, the people of Massachusetts. I've spent my career fighting for the people against the powerful and winning. Um, together, together we will win this. So thank you so much for having me tonight. And I look forward to working with you all and, and being your lawyer. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We are going to go to Miss Andrea Campbell. Andrea Campbell. Yes, she is in here in the... Oh. Shannon, can in you, the Ms. Shannon, can you put your information in the chat, please? Okay, Andrea Campbell, you have three minutes. Thank you. Followed by, we want to make sure to follow by Sandy. <laughs> baby. Um, I want to see that baby. I have two boys. <laughs> Show the baby, do whatever you need to do. Thank you, Mama. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you both for or organizing this. I come to you not from my home in Mattapan, but from someone else's. We were doing a GOTV event. Um, and, and so, of course, continuing to get out the vote. I'm honored and humbled to be a candidate in this race for attorney general. And I jumped into the race really recognizing that residents are struggling right now. They're worried about whether or not they're gonna thrive and prosper coming out of COVID. They're worried about discrimination. They're worried about Supreme Court. They're worried about wage theft, the housing affordability, everything you can think of going up in prices and so much more. I also recognize that residents are frustrated with government and don't necessarily see government as a solution to the things they have been struggling with for a long time. I've been stressing two things. One, that we live in the best state in the nation and that government, especially the attorney general's office can indeed help residents with those daily struggles. And how do I know we live in the best state in the nation? I think I'm living proof. I grew up in public housing with a family torn apart by tragedy, trauma, and incarceration. When I was eight months old, my mother died in a car accident, going to visit my father who was incarcerated at the time. My father and my brother cycled in and out of the prison system. And 10 years ago, my twin brother would die on the custody of the Department of Correction when he was only 29 years old. I'm the first in my family to go to college. I went to Princeton undergrad, the first in my family to go to law school. I went to UCLA for law school, but then I brought my happy self back from beautiful California. I came all the way back to Roxbury to make sure every family had access to the same opportunities I was afforded living in this great state. So I haven't just broken these cycles for my two boys, I've done it for others. 
I started my career representing children for free in education cases, especially students of color and students with disabilities and English learners holding METCO programs, charter schools, traditional public schools accountable to delivering a high quality education for our kids. I've worked for Governor Deval Patrick as an attorney. I've worked also on the city council pushing for access for folks to have opportunity. And I jumped into the AG's race knowing that my lived experience was indeed unique and that it does matter. And I would focus on prison reform, criminal legal reform, would absolutely close racial disparities in housing, wealth building, healthcare, you name it. And that is significant and that does matter. But in addition to that, I do bring a legal background. And I, Governor Patrick is supportive of me in this race, but so is Maura Healy, our current attorney general, who will be our next governor. And her endorsement matters, she said. Andre has a legal background and lived experience to really make a difference. But I also come with a legislative background that is unique from the other candidate in this race. And you want a candidate that can show up in the state house or local government to really effectuate change for our residents. So everyone has access to health care, an excellent education, a living wage, opportunities to start a business, to build a business, and of course, to do so much more. I don't know how much time I have left. I want to be mindful of that. 20 but seconds. 20, 20 seconds. So I'll just say, even with all these incredible endorsements of our current AG, Quentin Palfrey, to his credit, he just dropped out of the race and he is supporting me in this race. Um, Ayanna Presley, our incredible Congresswoman and so many others, Senator Markey, I'm not taking anything or anyone for granted. We have six days to go. I hope to earn your support. AndreaCampbell.org, you can find my information on the website. And thank you all for having me and for convening this conversation. Please get out to vote, especially the day after Labor Day. Thank you all so very much. And great to see that beautiful baby. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Campbell, put, make sure to put your information into the chat, please. Thank you Will so do. much. We are going to go next to, sorry, I just had to pull up my, okay, Sandy Zamor Kalexi. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, followed by Katrina Huff Larman and then DA Kevin Hayden. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Um, you, you got it close, Sandy Zamor Kalix, the TE stylist. Ah, thank you, everyone. I actually just got home from the van. I was running up the stairs <laughs> so I could get this done. So um, yes, my name is Sandy Zamor Kalix. I am a candidate for Suffolk County Sheriff. I am a mom of a BPS student, wife of a union carpenter, a resident of Marta Pan, and I'm a, a, community, a community activist. I've always been active in my community. I have an undergraduate degree in psychology, a master's in criminal justice, both from Northeastern University and a graduate certificate in social justice from Harvard Extension School. I have quite an interesting story when I talk about my journey of deciding to run. I was at the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department for 16 years. Jeff Gabor had hired me because she needed someone that was really community-based, community-centered when she was appointed as the sheriff because she was, she was going into turmoil and she needed someone that was going to bring the good work that she was doing to the community. And she reached out to me because I'd always been active in the community. So I started as a coordinator of communications and youth programming. And then I was later. I was appointed as the chief of communication and external affairs for the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department. So although I was able to move up the ranks at the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department, I wasn't able to implement the change that's needed for the community, for the population we serve, or for the employees at the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department. And when I say that, I mean there were certain proposals that I would present that weren't received. I, we do this thing called Directions for Corrections. I had wanted to do one based on housing to address the housing issues and have some at a city, state, and federal level so that we could um, address it because we're investing money into individuals and they're coming back to the community and unable to obtain housing. And I was told no. The last proposal that I submitted was I had a different proposal from Mass and Cass. The current sheriff um, had recommended we use a building that uh, we have called Building 8. Um, we would use it and the sheriff's department would leave with the day-to-day -day services. I did not um, I did not agree with that. I said we should rent or lease that building to um, the Department of Public Health or mental health and let them leave with the day-to-day -day services. That's not our specialty, nor did we have the staffing for that. And finally, um, because I say I only have one minute, I want to talk about leveraging our relationships with agencies like the Registry of Motor Vehicles so that we can make sure individuals at least leave with a mass ID so they can cast the stipends that they receive while they're in our care or apply for resources. 
employment or housing. In addition to that, we need a research department so that we can sit there and measure the programs, evaluate them so we can know if they're working or not. There are about 90 programs at the Sheriff's Department and we do not know if they're working or not. So these are some of the things that have made me want to run for the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department. So I'd be honored to earn anyone's vote here that resides in Suffolk County. My website is standyforsheriff.com or feel free anyone can call me at 617-839-2628. If they have any questions for me, because I look forward to having a conversation with anyone. I definitely have a pathway to victory and that's through meeting people, talking to people and explaining the importance of correction and the changes that are needed so individuals can reintegrate back into the community. So thank you. Great, thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you for joining us. Please put all that information that you just shared into the chat. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are gonna go on to Katrina Huff-Larman, Rallabai DA, Kevin Hayden. Katrina, are you in the room? Yes, I am. I was just trying to unmute myself for about a minute now. So I'm here, I'm here. Thank you Great. so much. Your time you. starts now. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for organ organizations who are able to able to uh, pull this together. This is really appreciative. Um, I appreciate this because you don't know that giving individuals who are running, especially the individuals who are um, climbing a steep mountain, this means a lot to us. So we can get in for the more we can get in front of the people, the more opportunity uh, people get to hear what we have to say. So my name is Katrina Huff Larman. I'm running for State Senate of 34, um, District 34. Um, that consists of Randolph, Brockton, Avon, Halifax, Hanson, Whitman, East Bridgewater, and I think that's it. Um, and I mentioned that because this is a new district. This is a is considered a majority minority district, and I also helped develop this district. So I'm really passionate about this district because I know it means equity and equality. This district supposed to give people an opportunity opportunity to run. Developing a majority minority district gives people hope that the same people will not continue to run and that black and brown people could feel confident about running and being part of the race. So this is what it's all about. And I, I'm, I'm proud that I was part of that. Um, I am currently a town councilor in Randolph, Massachusetts, and I've been a town councilor since 2016. Um, I am the first person of color to had to take that seat and I've used that seat very wisely. Actually, I have realized the power of being at the table as a town counselor, which has motivated me to run for this um, state Senate seat. But that's not the only thing that has motivated me to run for state Senate. Being a clinical social worker has also motivated me to want to um, to run for the state Senate seat because I have seen some of, in my work, I have seen some of the disparities, I have seen some of the um, inequalities uh, working with my with clients. Actually, I, I ran back here, I was at a, uh, an event in Brockton. It was the annual overdose vigil um, that I went to and I just wanted to make an appearance um, to see what was going on. And I'm so happy I went because it reminded me why I want to be a state senate. It reminded me of my work as a, as a social worker and bringing people to the table. That is so important. I was talking to this gentleman um, who was doing some great work and he, he was talking about a couple of bills that he did with other um, individuals in the state house and uh, representatives in senates. And I said, you know what? That's what's supposed to happen. We have to bring people to the table. We have to hear from the people that the issues actually are affecting. It's not enough that just government comes together and make policies and say, I think this works. I think this is going to work for the Black people. I think this is going to work for the gay community. I think this is going to work for those who are, are who are using substances. No, we need the individuals that it's affecting. So when we're talking about housing, when we're talking about homelessness, when we're talking about mental health, we need to make sure those people are at the table. And that's why I'm running because I want to bring those people to the table and I want to as a social worker that's what I do I research I look at the Paul I look at the problems and hopefully I can put I could gather enough data to put policies together 
So again, that's my, that's who I am, Katrina Huff uh, running for state senate in District 34. And you can reach me um, on my website, www.katrinafourcenate.com. Uh, feel free to call me. You know, I, I have an open book at this at this point, 617-240-7106. Um, the big day is next Tuesday. If you are able to hold a sign or just come and chit chat and lift me up pray for me, whatever you give to those, um, I appreciate it. So thank you so much for this forum. forum. I appreciate the time and I appreciate those who are listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katrina. I grew up with Katrina. Hey, Katrina. Hey. What's up? <laughs> Please put all of that information that you shared about yourself, all that good information in the chat so that everyone can take that with them. So thank you. All right, we are gonna head over to DA Hayden. Um, Kevin Hayden, is he in? Yes, I see you, okay. Yeah. Thank you, your three minutes starts now. All right, good, good evening, everybody. It's good to see you all. Uh, my name is Kevin Hayden. I'm your Suffolk County District Attorney. Uh, thank you, Aisha, and thank you, Chip, for putting this together and for everyone who's uh, here assembled. Uh, it's an honor to be here tonight. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm running for DA in Suffolk County because we need a proven and experienced leader um, that understands uh, that both public safety and criminal legal reform must be achieved. Uh, Suffolk County needs a leader who understands that both can be achieved, uh, that they are not mutually exclusive. Uh, you know, my dad, Bob Hayden, inspired me to public service. Uh, he was uh, assistant superintendent of Boston Public Schools. Uh, he was a leader in the NAACP um, and the preeminent uh, Black historian here in the Boston area. And he left me with his uh, great legacy of public service. Uh, he unfortunately passed away just two weeks into my appointment as a DA, uh, but he left me with that legacy, one of a commitment to community service, uh, one of a very uh, hard work ethic, uh, and a fight for racial equality and justice. And with that, I dedicated my entire 25 year legal career to our criminal legal system. I spent 11 years in the DA's office uh, from 1997 to 2008. I was hired by Ralph Martin, the first black African-American district attorney here in Boston, spent 11 years there, uh, worked uh, in the Sex Offender Registry Board and led the Sex Offender Registry, Registry Board for eight years, uh, and was also a criminal defense attorney uh, for almost six years. And, uh, you know, I've never been a politician. Uh, I've always been content with being a leader behind the scenes. But when the governor asked if I would serve, I knew I was called for such a time as this. And I've experienced our legal system in every possible way. As a black man who's been discriminated against, as the father of a Caribbean immigrant who came here when she was 13 years of age, as a father of, of, of two uh, black teenage sons, as a prosecutor and as a defense attorney. I know our criminal legal system inside and out. I know what works and what doesn't, but most importantly, I'm committed to making sure that it works for everyone. To do this, we need to move forward with a comprehensive commitment to criminal legal reform that includes a number of different strategies. Alternatives to prosecution and real diversion services is an absolute continued commitment that we must engage in. But we have to return to a rededication to some other key areas. One is intervention and prevention strategies in close collaboration with our community partners. We've done that very well in the past and I fear we've gotten away from it a little bit. Another is a rededication and, and commitment to our returning citizens coming back into our community. Another thing that Boston has done very well that I fear that we've gotten away from a little bit. It's with that complete approach uh, that we will make the difference that will allow for a criminal legal system that allows for both reform and for public safety. In just this eight months since I took office, we've accomplished much. A first ever initiative uh, uh, called Boston First to address trafficking of guns in, Bo in the Boston area as well as unsolved shootings. The creation of a community engagement team uh, that will bring the greatest collaboration between the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office um, and our communities that Suffolk County has ever seen. A services over sentences program that uh, uh, is, will transform the opioid epidemic by providing real alternatives to prosecution and real treatment for those sub suffering with substance use disorder and mental health disorder in the Mass and Cass area and throughout Suffolk County. A recent establishment of, of a civil rights uh, crime unit within our office uh, to address civil rights crimes and the rise of white supremacist groups here in Boston. If you want a district attorney that's committed to public safety and criminal legal reform, committed to justice and implementing needed reforms, then I am the candidate for you. I thank you all uh, for taking the time to listen to us tonight. I'd love your support on September 6th, 
And I know that together we can move forward in Suffolk County to even better. Thank you. Hey, Kevin. All your right. Dad, How you doing? Your, hey, your dad was uh, my mentor. Uh, I was yeah. in Mass Pep. I was in the Mass Pep program. I remember. Good oh, to see you. God. Good to see you again. <laughs> yeah. Bless you, bro. Thank you. DA Hayden, please put your information in the chat so people know how to follow you and catch up with you and vote for you if they so choose. So Absolutely. thank you. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, just want to make sure. Um, Senator Wilkerson has arrived. Oh, great. Okay. Fantastic. Senator Wilkerson, please, you can join the floor and your three minutes starts now. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I can tell you what an evening. I was actually out knocking doors up in uh, Dorchester and uh, literally rushing to get back home so I wouldn't miss this opportunity. And I, I thank you. I thank you for it. My name is Diane Wilkerson, and I am a candidate for the Second Suffolk Senate District in Boston. Uh, such an unusual situation because uh, when you hear people talking about wanting something new, uh, what I'm hearing from the residents across this district has, it has been such an incredible experience for me. Um, I know all of the other candidates and you may have heard from some already and I think wonderful people, but the reality is that no one has the experience uh, that, that I bring to this table. And I think that the moment a gentleman said something to me when I was leaving Dorchester just now, he said, this is a mess. Um, the reality is it doesn't have to be a mess. Massachusetts has more money than it we have ever had before. And I think about the fact that I was able to deliver to a community when we had to fight over the crumbs and still do that. Imagine what I could do walking into that building where we actually have resources. Um, COVID is what drew me back into this race and watching the lack of response, the lack of resources, trying to figure out what the heck happened that our incredible congressional delegation delivered 149 billion, that's nine zeros, to Massachusetts with a requirement or directive that it be targeted to the most vulnerable communities. That's the black and Latino community. And I can't find a single person who thinks that they saw $149 billion or anything not close to it. And so while many people talk about having ideas, I have an actual plan. The plan is called Contemporations. I really uh, uh, hope that you would go to the website and read what it's about. And I say it again, Contemporations. I tell people it's a trans so bold, bold and, and, and uh, transformational that we had to create a whole new word to describe what we're about to do. And if there's any doubt, don't be scared. It's a $10 billion plan targeting black and Latino residents of Boston. And we have six different areas and there is an actual uh, money identification and the sources are identified to every single one where we will get it. It addresses the destruction and violence that was heaped upon Black Boston in the 1970s. I don't have to go back 400 years. It speaks to Black home ownership. It speaks to Black and Latino businesses. It speaks to eradicate the gap um, that people seem to be ignoring. Our children were out of continuing school education for two and a half years and people walk back like nothing ever happened. We have a plan for it, a year round plan for it that divides and requires all of our schools. Um, our schools, we have a one time $15,000 payment to every black resident of Boston as of March of 2020. And it is the beginning, not the end. Um, we can do it, experience matters. If you're looking for someone who's, who's ready to go to back for you and go to the floor and deliver the goods, I'm that person, why? Why do you, why would you know that? Because I did it before and I'm ready to do it again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Wilkerson. Um, thank you. All right, so we are going to pause. Oh, um, Senator Wilkerson, please put all your information into the chat so people know how to find you and um, make sure that you, they can earn your, you can earn their vote. All right. Um, so now we are going to, do we have any other candidates that we missed? No, I think we got everybody. Not everybody. Yeah, fantastic. Again, I want to send regrets from um, Attorney General uh, Maura Haley, who's running for governor, and um, Senator Liz Miranda, who's running for um, the Senate seat. 
um, who um, unfortunately has COVID and unable to join us this evening. Aisha? Yes. Sorry so, to interrupt. I'm Anthony Amore. I'm running for a state auditor. Yes, thank you. We're going to turn it over to you in just a moment. We are going to have a few words from our sponsors um, who are here with us, and then we are going to turn it into the um, Republican section. So thank you for joining us. All right. So who I do see President Reeves from the NAACP Cambridge. So President Reeves, if you or Mayor Reeves, if you would like to say a few words, thank you for joining us. <clears throat> yes, I, I, I think I'm unmuted. Yeah. Well, yes. it's a hard thing to mute you, Ken. I just want you to know, all right? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, let me first say this. I want to congratulate uh, Aisha, who is our uh, Cambridge branch NACP uh, secretary, as well as our elected member to the Skook Committee uh, as the co-moderator here. <laughs> and Chip Greenwich, who is a son of Cambridge and Boston in that order, who uh, has brought us the greatest minds. And thank you for the courage to have a candidate at the very end of August when many people are still um, ending their vacation feeling. But so you, we have the kind of few but mighty here, but we all have to go out and tell 10 people that the election is next Tuesday, the day after Labor Day, and the Cambridge branch NACP certainly wants to sound the alarm that we have plenty to uh, go out and vote for. There's some extraordinary choices and some extraordinary candidates uh, this time, and I'm excited to be able to go in the voting booth and just, uh, really have a good time because we have so many uh, formidable, and I'm gonna say particularly formidable women. And then I'm gonna say particularly formidable women of color that I really, I'm, I hope I am able to get out of the booth because I'm just so glad to see the quality of leadership that we could add to the leadership in this state, uh, so this commonwealth. So it's, it's very exciting. So I do want everybody to know, we do know that voting has already started. So you don't have to wait till election day. You can uh, inquire of your city's uh, town or town clerk on how you can vote uh, any day between now and next Tuesday, but we really do need everybody to vote. And I could go on and on about efforts to suppress voters and things of that nature. But our real issue is that we have some great candidates that we have to have to support because they can get elected and they can put some light in the tunnel. And this is a dark time in this country and we have a laundry list of immediate needs. I'm glad to see people are running on platforms that have to do with housing. Uh, we, we can't get enough people who understand that public education in America is in a, in a, a, a tough place and we're not giving people educations that will make them competitive. So, uh, and we have to stop talking about gaps. We just need to fix the fact that we're uh, passing people through a system that does not equip them. And we have to end that and do some different things different ways. So I think you didn't need more from me, but uh, I do say that this is an exciting group of candidates. I learned here tonight, this was, I did not know that Quentin Palfrey had dropped out of the race and, and had endorsed uh, uh, Andrea Campbell. I think that's, uh, a very interesting development since I'm the president of, of the NACP, I can't endorse anybody here, but as an individual, I think that's very interesting news. And uh, we Thank have some you. interesting candidates. Louis Great Lisa has said, Ken, three minutes, like all the other candidates. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have put the prompts in the all chat right, to so say you can, 20 you can, you seconds, one minute. The time up on you. All right. So. Considering the source, I'll end now. <laughs> Thank you so much, President <laughs> Louis, I love you, my brother. All right. <laughs> I love you back, Black. <laughs> and we can come back at the end. We'll have some time. Um, 
um, after we get through our Republican candidates who are um, joining yeah. us and in, in the room. So well, me, and, is anyone here from the YWCA? I think someone yeah. from the Y will be joining us a little bit later. Is anyone I'll here? I'll just say from... a couple words. I'll yes, couple please. Words greatest quick. Minds. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Chip Greenwich, your Greatest Minds. Um, been doing this kind of work all my life in the city of Cambridge and Boston and also in Atlanta. But I'm back um, at the Kennedy School as a visiting fellow, but also finish up this PhD at Georgia State. But it's been amazing just to be in the Cambridge, growing up in Cambridge and also running across the bridge and also being a part of the Roxbury Grove Hall, Roxbury communities over the years. Um, one thing that I found is that it's just getting everyone together and hearing the candidates is such an education. <coughs> and I'm just very proud that everyone has been able to be able to get on this call and just hear from different people. And sometimes people can't put the face to the name and the name to the face. And so it's very important. And now with all this new technology that we have, we have Facebook, we have IG, we have all these different ways that people are able to get their word out. So I'm just wanna just thank everybody just for being here, all candidates. And I made sure that we called this event equal time because you know what? Everybody from any kind of denomination of what you wanna call in political office needs to be heard because you know what? We can listen to all different ideas and we can get to the common area because that's the only way that anything's gonna go forward in this thing. So I really appreciate everyone being here and let's go on. We got our, our Republican candidates that are about to go on and I'm so excited for all of them to hear about and meet them as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Chip. Thank you, Greatest Minds, again, for being a co-sponsor here today. Right. And we have, um, so without further ado, we are just going to jump on in. We are going to go to Anthony Amori, who is running for auditor. Um, thank you, Anthony. You have your time starts now. Thank you, Aisha. I, I, uh, it's an honor for me to, to be speaking to your group this evening. Thank you for having me. You know, as I'm campaigning around uh, the Commonwealth for this office, one of the questions I get most is, what is the auditor? Most people don't know what the state auditor does, or even that it's a statewide office, but it's really exactly. important. <laughs> it's really important, Chip. I'm a Kennedy School guy as well, like you. And, you know, uh, these these offices, offices matter. And uh, the, the state auditor touches every state agency in the Commonwealth. And in a nutshell, every three years, the auditor has to do an audit of uh, every state agency. And frankly, that's not happening right now. I hope to be state auditor because my campaign's motto is professional, not political. My goal is to run for state auditor and if elected, govern the office in a way that doesn't fit my, my ideology or anybody else's ideology, but right down the middle, following the facts and the facts alone, but most importantly, and this is something that I really hope I can get across to this audience tonight. I'm the only person running in this campaign who's committed to using the bully pulpit of the auditor's office to talk to the taxpayers. Too often we say, you know, I wanna to listen to the taxpayers, but my goal is to gather information as auditor and come back to you, come back to your community radio stations, come back to your civic groups, Come back to the NAACP and other minority groups and in other parts of the state that are often ignored and tell you what's going on in state government. One of the reasons you don't know what the auditor does is because, because nobody does that. Nobody who's ever been auditor has said, all right, we found these problems. Now let me tell the people. That's part two. And it's a very big part because as the chief accountability officer for the state of Massachusetts, my belief is not that state government will be accountable to me, but it's accountable to you. So I would be the conduit of the information to you and to your organizations. And you will, if I'm elected, you will hear from me often in many different ways that you never hear from any politicians, to be totally frank with you, because that's what I think is the most important role of the auditor. And that is to reach out to the people and let them know where the waste, fraud, and abuse is happening. That empowers you in a democracy. That empowers you to turn to your state representatives. You had some really fine candidates speak tonight. Uh, I think Senator Wilkerson would understand this really well from her time in the legislature. If the people have the power in terms of the information, then the legislator has to be accountable to you, not to the powers that be on Beacon Hill. 
I'm the person that will bring that information to you. I'll give you one example of something I will look at that affects your community. So you, you're probably aware of the state diversity supplier office where you know there's state law that says that um, minority contracts uh, have to go to, uh, for, I'm sorry, minority companies have to get state contracts at a, at a fair rate. But what most people don't know is that because of the Pacheco law, people who own minority owned businesses, when they try to get these contracts, they can't compete because they don't have enough capital to pay their workers at a level um, equal to state employees. They don't have enough money to uh, pay benefits equal to state employees. It doesn't mean they're mistreating their employees. It means they just don't have that capital yet. And that's understandable in an underprivileged and marginalized community. As state auditor, I will dig really deep into this issue to really try to identify problems and solutions so that minority-owned businesses in Massachusetts will be on an equal playing field. Because right now they're not. Pacheco law are not. It's very important that we don't just you know, implement a law, feel like we did something good, and then move on. We have to monitor these things. As auditor, I'll do that. And you can count on me to be coming back to you constantly if I'm elected. I'm not going there to be the Republican auditor. I'm going there to be your auditor to root out waste, fraud, and abuse. My campaign's website is amore2022.com. It's like that song, That's Amore, A-M-O-R-E, 2022.com. We're very responsive. If you reach out to us on that website, after hearing me tonight, I hope many of you do, we will get back to you. You're going to see me in your community between now and November because I'm committed to representing everybody as auditor. And I hope that you'll invite me into your homes and into your civic groups to talk more to people you know, because I really want to make sure that I represent everybody if you give me the honor of voting for me for auditor come November. So I thank you very, very much for inviting me to, to speak to you tonight. It's really an honor for me. And um, I hope that you're able to have more forums like this in the future. It's very, very refreshing. Thank you. Uh, Aisha, it looks like we got a, we got a round two coming up. Uh, and you know we'll have more time to dig um, deeply with the candidates. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, um, Anthony. Please put your information in the chat so people know how to contact you. Um, I know you already just stated it, but again, please put it in the chat. We are going to go next to Leah Allen, who's running for Lieutenant Governor. Um, and then we have Rayla Campbell running for Secretary of State. And then Jay Secretary of I'm having some connection issues. Can you all hear me? Okay. Uh, am I all set to go? I could. Yes, I think someone else actually needs to mute as well. I think there's some background. Okay. Um, well, I wanted to thank Aisha and Chip for the invitation and the opportunity. I'm happy to come in and connect with you guys. My name is Leah Allen. I am a wife. I'm a mother of two young kids under three. I'm a former state representative and I'm a registered nurse. And I first um, ran for the legislature when I was 24 because at the time I was working as a nurse in a nursing home. I was working 16 hour shifts trying to pay off my student loans, trying to pay off my car payment. And um, there was some talk about taxes being raised in the Commonwealth by $8 billion at the same time that reports were coming out that there were state agencies that were just losing millions of dollars that they couldn't account for. And I thought that we needed more accountability in state government. We needed to figure out where our money was going before we raised taxes on anyone in the Commonwealth. And I ran kind of on that kind of platform. I won um, in a special election and then I won re-election. After I served for a few years, I returned to my previous job in the private sector at a local uh, community hospital working as a registered nurse. I worked there for almost five years, um, right through the pandemic, on the front lines treating hospitalized COVID patients even while I was pregnant with my son. 
And when I was attempting to return to work from maternity leave um, due to government mandates telling me that I had to choose uh, either taking the COVID vaccine or losing my job, I wasn't comfortable. I was um, nursing my son at the time and I was not comfortable taking that shot. So I unfortunately was let go from my job. And I think the pandemic also highlighted a lot of shortcomings um, from our pandemic response and the critical thinking at the executive office um, of Massachusetts. I think I had a problem with the fact that our small business businesses were closed for so long while our big box stores like Walmarts and Targets were allowed to remain open and people's uh, livelihoods were destroyed. Our children were kept out of school for so long and, and uh, wore masks long after the mandates for uh, the rest of Massachusetts had expired. Our kids uh, suffered a lot through that. And I think that at this point, it's even become clear that a lot of those policies were very destructive and we haven't even so much as heard an apology or anybody admit that um, it, that they had done the wrong thing. And granted, I mean, nobody knew what was going on at the beginning, but um, as data came out and time went on, I think that we could have handled the pandemic a lot better and saved a, a lot of um, heartache for our, our citizens and our economy and our, of course our, our children. Uh, so that coupled with the affordability issues here in Massachusetts, inflation is running rampant, your dollar's just not going as far as it used to. Um, our state mandates, um, we've lost a lot of key state workers that we couldn't afford to lose in the Department of Mental Health, Department of Children and Families. A lot of people were um, coerced into taking that shot when they didn't really agree with it. And um, I want to make sure that we're a government that is protecting people's rights, the rights of everyone, and making sure that we're accountable to the people and that we um, are making government work in favor of the people, not against them, and not getting involved in their personal lives. Um, so if you would like to learn more about that platform, um, you can visit my website, leahcoleallen.com. And I appreciate the time to be able to speak to you all. And um, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Leah. Please put your information into the chat. Thank you again. We are going on to Israela Campbell in the Zoom. Rayla Campbell. I don't see her. Chip, do you see Rayla Campbell? No? Okay. We are going to move on to Jay McMahon, who is running for, let me get, Attorney General. Jane? Hi, guys. Good to be with you tonight. Good to have you. Thank you. Hey, Brother Jay. Good to see hey. you. You. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let me tell you about myself. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jay McMahon. I'm running to be your next Attorney General. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am married to Shelly, the father of five children. I was born and raised in Bourne. And while I attended public schools, and when I was a young man, I volunteered with the Massachusetts Army National Guard, became a lieutenant in the military police. I also entered law enforcement, becoming a police officer and a member of the Bonsville County Sheriff's Office and Central Dispatching and the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. I received my... Uh, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from UMass, and my law degree at Suffolk University in Boston. In the military, I was trained to command battalion-sized organizations, which contain over 1,000 personnel. After the military, I was employed in uh, business management positions with huge organizations, such as Scott and Taylor Oil Company, Cape Cod Bank and Trust, and Cape Cod Hospital, where we had over 2,000 employees. And so I have the management experience for large organizations, such as the Attorney General's Office. For the last 35 years, I've been a trial attorney, having practiced law in every single level of court in Massachusetts, both federal and state, and before many federal, state, and municipal boards and commissions. I've enjoyed the practice of law, and I have a vast experience in almost every area of the law. I am running for Massachusetts Attorney General because I believe that all of Americans have the right to public safety, the rights granted under our constitutions, and to be free from government infringement with political agendas. I will enforce law and order so that all citizens can enjoy their pursuits in education, occupation, religion, and other pursuits of life. I believe that Black lives really do matter in this country. 
I want to see everyone achieve the American dream. I am concerned for the crime waves that are afflicting our minority neighborhoods. I believe that all of our neighborhoods deserve the same level of public safety. And to that end, we must allocate law enforcement resources where they are needed most. I stand with minority community leaders, all of whom are calling for more law enforcement, not less. I will never support a defund the police movement. In fact, the statistics are compelling that we must increase our law enforcement personnel and resources. To that end, I am committed to public safety for all neighborhoods in Massachusetts. I believe that our constitutions grant all groups the right to protest what they believe are extreme grievances against government and society as a whole. Nonetheless, those protests must be peaceful and in accordance with public order. I don't believe that any one group should be excused because their grievances are perceived to be of higher moral value than others. And therefore death and destruction are part of their protests be an acceptable way of expression. I will prosecute that criminal behavior and I won't dismiss it with something like, yes, I know American cities are burning, but that's how forests grow. That's how Mara Healy, the current attorney general responded to the 2020 riots. I don't believe that parents who speak up before local school committees are extremists. I believe that we all have the right to express our grievances and demand to know the curriculum that our children are being taught in schools. I believe that if a parent thinks that critical race theory is anti-American and is harmful to our society, they should have the right to stand up and protest that. As your next attorney general, I will not be pushing a political agenda. However, I will uphold and enforce all of our laws. I will support and encourage all of our police officers, state troopers, firefighters, and first responders. I will back them when, with necessary resources in order to keep all of our citizens safe. I support qualified immunity for our first responders. If we find a rogue police officer in our midst, well, then we will prosecute them just like any other person with criminal intent. But by and large, and at the end of the day, I back the blue. To learn more about me and my positions, please go to my website at Attorney J. McMahon, that's A-T-T-O-R-N-E-Y-J-A-Y-M-C-M-A-H-O-N, no spaces, uh, dot com, or my Facebook page at Attorney J. McMahon. I am Jay McMahon. I am running to be your next attorney general. Thank you for listening and God bless you all. Yeah, thank you for being here, man. You just, I've, I've never, this is just great. This is exactly what this is for you to people just to bring it out and to just share your opinions and nail it. So I just thank you, man. You just right on, go for it. Thank, thank you, Judge. You're good. No, guy. no, no. I really. Let's go, Jay. Uh, well, no, no. <laughs> Jay, please put all your information into the chat, please. I know you just read off everything, but if you could put it in the chat, that would be helpful. Thank you. I will do that. Thank you. All right. So it looks like we have heard from all those who have joined us. Um, again, thank you to everyone. Thank you to all the candidates. I mean, this was really an opportunity as a, a you know a school committee member, as a politician myself. I am the one who wants to make sure that we care, that we are informed about who is running, what platforms they're running on, why, and to when we hit the polls, know and be confident on who you circle the boxes for, right? This was really an important space, um, an opportunity to be able to host this. Um, and thank you, Chip, for joining me and to our sponsors again. Um, now, I do want to maybe just open it up. I'm curious, have have people come into this space maybe undecided like me and have now made a decision? I'm curious, does anybody want to go on, well, on I, uh, say I, who I, they want to vote with for? You. I mean, it's really good. I mean, it's, I think it's, you know, I'm at the Kennedy School, but also just in person is that, you know, I've been in Georgia, I've been in Massachusetts, I've been in Cambridge, I've been in Boston. But the point is for us to open an open discussion about ideas and um, hearing from all the candidates, it's all about ideas and Republican, Democrat, you know, 
person of color, a white person, doesn't matter, woman, male. It's about us sharing all these ideas and putting them on the table and for us to figure out what's the best idea to go forward with or how do we mix them up and all that. So I'm really supportive of us. And I think um, I used to say, Chip, we got to do this. We got to do this. And I was like, what do you mean? I said, got to do this. And I'm really glad that I was able to put that title equal time because that's what I wanted us to do was just make sure that everyone is able to hear all candidates. It doesn't matter where, but we just need to hear them and hear them give them a fair chance and fair shake and let a democracy work itself out. Absolutely. Thank you. So I'm just going to go. We have a couple of hands that are raised and I want to give folks an opportunity to share. Uh, Samuel Pierce, followed by Marvin Badio. And these are more general comments. These are not comments yes. to support a candidate or anything like that. Let me put some parameters on some yes. folk. On some folk. <laughs> oh, that's Thank fine. So these are general comments. I'm not supporting any specific candidate. Um, what I'm curious about and would like to hear more of is more of the, what I call the meat and potatoes. Every candidate I think has an excellent resume, but one of the things that, I'm just gonna take my uh, video off. One of the things that is troubling to me as a Massachusetts voter is the fact that Massachusetts would be the seventh wealthiest nation in the world if we were not a state. But because we are a state and we do have all of the surplus money, I'm a little bit confused as far as what earmarks mean from the federal government and how the state legislature and how some of our candidates can, I guess, be the shepherd to make sure that the people who were supposed to have the money earmarked to actually get the resources. And you hear that time and time again, no other place than mass and cast. And people talk about mass and cast a lot, but what we don't talk about is 80% of the people that you see on Mass and Cast do not live in Boston. And so, yes, we want to look out for all of the people who may be troubled or going right. through something, but we also want to be somewhat territorial. You know, it's like I, I was a, a basketball player and an athlete, you know, going to school and it's like, we had our home court. You know, and we, when you went to another school, they had their home court and then you would play the game and see who won. This is America, I think, that everyone should be able to live wherever they want to live. But one of the things that has troubled me, and this is really my question, is how do we get the resources for the people that it was designated for if other people can swoop in and get the resources if we don't know about it? And that's what I'm trying to figure out. How can these candidates do the right thing, do something that's fair for communities that often have been left out? Because when you look at... Um, both the Federal Reserve uh, summary, as far as the financial picture of black and white Boston, they say that a black family has $8 as a net worth, a white family has $250,000, and all of that goes back to the Homestead Act, really, and policies that the government created to allow people to buy real estate. Right and on. as we look at our community, and we talk about you know urban renewal and gentrification, one of the things that I feel like we have to do is we have to break up this idea that developers can already foreshadow into the future that after 20 to 40 years, all of the low income or public housing that they built can now be transformed into luxury housing. Right. And we right. see that in Roxbury, we see that in Dorchester. So um, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna I'm just give you a couple more seconds. No, that's fine, I'll start. We're gonna I'm do just one curious. minute, one minute. We're gonna give everybody a minute just to go mm -hmm. ahead. Um, thank thank you. you. That was a great point. Marvin, please. And then uh, Louis Lee. So one minute, please. Yeah, I'd just like oh, to say- Oh, now it's you. one minute. <laughs> you're, you're two minutes. Go ahead. Oh, no worries. I'd like to say thank you for everyone who created <laughs> this format. I appreciate everyone for actually taking the time. This is a well thought out program. Honestly, it gets me excited to be like, because I try to do this myself, bring the conversation to the forefront. But this is the communication that we need as a community. We need an equal platform. Like this is so powerful. You guys took it to another level. This was transparency throughout the well-organized. I love all the candidates. Like this is a hard choice, but that's your personal choice. And that's a fair choice. Like I got excited seeing how many, like from the beginning to the end, you truly felt 
why it's important to be informed. This is the scariest part. A lot of people just vote for whatever they, but they don't know their candidates. This is scary to me. We need to educate, but not to go on a tantrum. This was amazing. This was breathtaking. You guys really took it to the next level. It was organized and you could feel the thought process. These candidates took their time. I appreciate everyone coming out. This was amazing. I, my breath, like this gives me a reason to go out more and support my candidates. But as a community base, we need to get people to be educated. It's not just because you're black, you're gonna vote black. It's just see the politics, what they're offering you. You have to listen to the full story. You can't just go on the narrative. But this is amazing. You guys hit it off a home run. I wish I could be more a part of you guys. I need this more in my community. You are more than welcome to join Greatest Minds. We are yeah, everybody. Awesome. Everyone's involved. So don't you you are now a member. Just hit me. Yeah, right? no, because I what I do is I work with the Haitian community. Like I bring leaders to the Haitian community without a personal bias. So I'm bringing that to the Haitian community. I'm bringing that to minority community and Brockton. And now I see why this platform on the largest stage needs to be built. We need to bring leaders together on an equal playing field. No more right, left, it's us as a community because we face the tax together, not just rich, poor. We live in this commonwealth. This is amazing, guys. Just quickly, right before we go over to uh, Louis and Lisa, it's that it's great to hear people saying, hey, I was a nurse before I decided to jump in. Hey, I was a teacher. Hey, I was a community activist. And that's what the whole piece about being, the original pieces about being a politician was, was um, being in there and representing the people. You know, someone saying that, hey, I've been in part of the, the, um, the um, National Guard and services. So I'm really proud of all these people standing up and taking this, this jump. So I'm really proud just to hear that and being around that and people, thank you for everyone's service. And I want to shout out the social workers, right? As a fellow social worker, I want to oh, shout out the social workers who are the candidates who are worker. in the, you know, I'm just saying, and, and Greater Boston Association for Black Social Workers is also a part, is a co-host here. Um, so I just want to shout them out. I am a part of their um, membership and also serve in the um, community affairs um, committee. So definitely <laughs> want to shout out our social workers, those candidates as well. Thank you. All right, so thank you, Marvin, for your comments. And um, our, gonna... our senior, our senior member here, I love calling him senior just to mess with him. Our senior member here, Louis Elisa, can you give us a couple words, please? I, used to read about I just want to. I used to read about you in the Bay State Banner back in the '80s. I just want you to know that. All right, when I was a little teen, just want to let you but know that you never saw, but you never saw me in Newsweek. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> You know, before Marvin started talking, you have face it right into the screen. Now it's past that. Anyway, um, thanks all y'all for the work you're doing, and um, and of course it's necessary. And I guess what I want to say is that despite everything else that's going on, candidates notwithstanding, we have a job to do. Our job is to get out the vote. I want to thank you know uh, Ken for being a president of the NACP and being focused on what the NACP was basically formed around, around the need to get black people to be accountable to themselves and to work to get, you know, access to the right to vote so they could choose their leaders. And and and, and Cambridge has been consistent in this process. We, you know, we're missing tree and a few other people, but you know, I appreciate you guys being there. But we all got to put our shoulders to the wheel. We want to do a soul to the pole this coming Sunday. Everybody should be aware we're trying to get the church and everybody to focus. Boston's black community has the worst voting turnout record in the country. Now I don't know where you know. Um, What's the name got his numbers about number seventh in the nation? Because I I've been to Illinois and New York and Detroit, you know. I mean, but I can tell you for a fact when they were looking at the voting turnout around the country for mayoral and other elections, other than the presidential, we had the worst numbers. So this this then becomes our commitment and our job as folks who say we're committed to education. And of course, we've got the greatest minds, 21 colleges in a one mile square radius. We should not have such a poor voter turnout record. Not since the Val Patrick or the Barack Obama have we as a community made our voices heard. Now I know we can because we broke the system when DeVal ran. 
Mm-hmm. We literally broke the system. We, we had more people than they had ballots for. And they stayed in line until 930 at night to vote. So I know we'll turn out, but we're somehow we've got to inspire everybody. So the GOTV is the thing I'm going to focus on. Each one, reach one. Everybody get out there in your organization, social workers, teachers, firemen, police, whoever you are, get your folks to talk about going out and vote because they look at that vote and they determine whether or not you're a threat, whether or not you can make a difference in their winning and losing, which determines why they stay in office. So we have to do the GOTV. This education piece is good for the greatest minds. We have minds that are not so great, but they will follow directions if we go to them. So you have to reach out for them, talk to them, cousins, uncles, you're all on Twitter and Facebook. and Talk to them. Talk to your church members this Sunday. You know, get them out to vote, regardless who they vote for. I'd like you to vote for my candidate. I won't mention his name, you know, but, you know, get the folks out to vote. They got to go out to vote. We got to show ourselves strong. And as Chip said, with all these Black women and all these people for a first time making a challenge to the, to the top, we got to prove ourselves strong. And the only way we do that is we get out the vote. So that's all I'm going to ask you to do. I've done this now for 60 some years. I started with Shirley Chisholm's back in Brooklyn. And I know the results of having people who are committed to you. So, I mean, great minds, great ideas, good program. But now we got to put our feet on the street, get our butts out the seat and do the job that we were called to do, which is get our people out the vote. Thank you. Love it. You dropped a lot of little gems there. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Um, We have a candidate who has just joined us, Rayla Campbell, who is running for Secretary of State. So thank you. We are going to give you your time. Um, Your time starts. Are you able to hear us? You're able to unmute? Yes, I am. Sorry for being late. I did have a prior event that I was at tonight. Absolutely. No worries. Thank you so much for joining us. And your time starts now. Thank you so much. I am Rayla Campbell and I'm running for Secretary of State. I am running because I think that our voices haven't mattered for so long in this state and we need truth and transparency and a really just accountability for the job in the office. Bill Galvin has been in office longer than I have been alive. I grew up on the South Shore, born in Boston, raised in Situate, but I grew up in low income and Section 8 housing. I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth as everybody wants to try to paint me as. They also want to paint me as ultra MAGA. Miss Miss Campbell, is it possible? You can tell us no, but you can't, but is it possible to um to have you on camera or you can't oh yeah you can. Right. i can i'm just i'm literally down in new bedford right now so right. let me turn my camera around if it's there allowed you go. Great. there thank i am you. there you are <laughs> thank you, thank you, chip for, ch- thank you chip for that prompt no i want them to feel you and see you, see you. So, you know what i mean Go for it. There you Thank go. You. So I am actually on the docks, which you can't see right now because I do have my virtual background on. So if you hear any boats go off, that's why. But I did just finish a meeting down here in Manapoiset with the RTC. And it's just very important that we're standing up for our constitution. Now, us being born, raised here in Massachusetts, we know that this is where liberty and freedom were born. We know that if you learn your history, that black history has always been part of Massachusetts history. And I happen to make history by coming the first African-American woman ever to make statewide ballot in this state's history, which is, very exciting for me. And I, it's not something that I sit there and go, oh, because of the color of my skin, because I'm an American. And my family has fought so hard just for us to be able to go out and get the education that we need. And that is just by everyday battles that we have had to fight and overcome. My grandmother was a head postmaster in Dorchester. She still lives there in Mattapan in the house we've grown up in. And for me, knowing where I came from and knowing why it is so important that I am out there right now fighting for my children. My husband happens to be Irish. His family is from 
uh, straight from Ireland. He's third generation. His grandparents knew what it was like to come over and have to work and sponsor themselves. And not only did I find out that my mom used to work down on the docks and build Boston whalers, but so did my husband's father. And through that, when you look at everything, they're trying to put us back into a civil war and back into a war where it is a pit on race. That is not who we are. We have overcome all of that. But we as African-Americans have always had our voices silenced. We're being promised so much by the left, but yet they just use us as a pawn to get what they want. They think that they can just keep telling the black people, oh, we are gonna give you this, we're gonna give you that. It's all about equality and equity. Well, we're equal under the Lord Jesus Christ. God has made us equal. All men and women are created equal and we have equal rights and nobody can take those away from you. And you have to remember that it is we, the people, they want to go out there and give illegals driver's license while telling black people that it's racist to ask for an ID, but you want to give it away to other people for free. When you challenge anything that they say, they want to put you into a corner. Imagine being a black Republican in Massachusetts, born and raised, and I'm Catholic. That's like a trifecta. And they don't like that I stand up and I speak the truth for us everyday hard working Americans. We have freedom of information that is being suppressed from us. Why don't they want us to see how they really think about us? Because that's what it comes down to. I will make sure that we bring that transparency. I will make sure that our voices are represented because it is the American people, it is our voices that we need to be standing up for. If we heard the shot heard around the world, that was a black man that died that shot. And we wanna make sure that we are representing our voices as American that we're electing people that are gonna stand up and protect our constitution and stand up for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's why when I become your first Madam Secretary and you elect me to continue making history in Massachusetts, I'll make sure that we're protecting our rights and that we are protecting our history, our historical artifacts. Never again will an African-American statue be desecrated, and we will be putting back up the Abraham Lincoln statue that was bought and paid for by freed slaves 187 years. Ask them how they feel when they took that statue down in the name of their wokeness. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much, Rayla Campbell. Um, and please put your information into the chat um, so that folks know how to get in contact with you and, um, and so that you can earn their vote. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. It's an honor and a pleasure to be on. We have just in just under two years, a little over two years, reached 21,000 followers on Facebook. So you can follow me on Facebook. I'm putting that in there right now. It's Rayla Campbell from Massachusetts. And my website is Rayla Campbell for MA, which I am putting also in there in my email address if you do want to email me with any questions. Fantastic. Thank you again. All right. Um, so, all right. So again, it is coming up on the hour, nine o'clock. Again, you have heard from all of the candidates, um, some of who were not able to join us this evening and send their, send their regrets. Um, but we want to make sure that we get out to vote, right? Everybody. Again, early voting is now through Friday. So please make sure that you know where your polling place is. And um, please make sure that you know where your polling place is and make sure that you go out to vote on September 6th, the day after Labor Day. So after you enjoy this very long weekend, make sure that you figure out who your candidates are that you are rooting for. Sign up to volunteer and be a part of their campaign, right? And make sure that you are getting out the vote to your neighbors. Spread the word, share the word to all of your peoples on who your candidates are yeah, and why. Okay. This is a very important race and we cannot take this race for granted. Um, we heard from individuals who are former um, 
former elected officials who are on this call, just wise people who are on this call. We know that this is an important time and important opportunity, and we want to make sure that all of your voices get heard. And the only way that happens is by voting. All right. So please make sure that you hit those polls. I also want to shout out again all of our sponsors, Greater Boston Association for Black Social Workers, Greatest Minds, NAACP Cambridge, YWCA Cambridge. And I also wanna say for the YW, I am also a chair for their social justice and advocacy subcommittee along with Michelle Scott, who was on this call. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you for joining us. And again, we cannot stress this enough. This, this viewing of this forum is going to be on our Facebook pages. Go to Aisha M. Wilson on Facebook. Go to George Chip Greenwich on Facebook, Greatest Minds. We have shared this. My Brother's Keeper have shared this. So many folks have shared this page. Make sure that you continue to share it. Make sure that you are informed. Go to your polling station informed. Don't just go by the popularity contest because you know, that's how some folks like to do it. And then, you know, if that's how you like to do it, that's your business, right? Uh, and make sure that you are informed. That is the best way to choose the candidate that is going to make moves and progress the way we need it for our community and for our commonwealth. All right. So, Chip, what you got to say in closing? No, no, just closing. It's just like, you know what? Anytime you like throw a party, a birthday party or an event, you wonder who's going to show up. And I just thank everybody for showing up and listening and just being a part of this. Um, this, uh, we hope that people will will Instagram their friends, Twitter, Facebook, do it all, call them on the phone. You can do it in many different ways to get people out to the polls. So, and also be available and also, you know, check, make sure people have all these resources as well. So looking forward to this, um, please, we'll be sharing this tomorrow as a, um, as a uh, video as well, but it's also on Facebook Live right now, which can also be shared. I just want to thank everybody for showing up today. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for being an outstanding co-host. Co and also, who's our other co-host? We've been hearing yes, him all day. my baby boy, Changa. Hello. Changa, Hello, thank you time. for being a co-host. Prime time, he's been a great co-host. He's allowed yep, he's mommy see, to do her he's thing. He's gonna see this 20 years from now and say, hey, mommy, I was a co-host. Yes. <laughs> All right. And his godfather's on the call, President Reeves, godfather, hello. <laughs> what if I thought I was the godfather? What's going on here? <laughs> we have Hold honorary on. godfathers. We All have right. hey, no, no, I'm I want both. I want both, <laughs> as the Black folks say, both. Well, we thank you again. We want to thank the audience for joining us. It really is a pleasure and an honor that you took this time to be with us this evening. We truly hope that you are more informed as you hit the polls. Um, this week and on Tuesday. So again, thank you all so much for joining us. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Michelle, Michelle. Barbara Kirk, Kennedy. I see you. Romaine, thank you. Thank you, Ty, Tony, Yay. Mayor Reeves. Thank you, Barbara Linda Barnes, Brian. Barbara Gibbs. Who's Alisa? Anthony. Banks, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, again. Chip. Be Anthony Banks. Great job. Be Anthony Banks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all again for joining Chip us. Scott, one of the baddest workers you. ever in, in Cambridge, ever. Yes. This has been great. Thank you so much. Yep, they're all off. Good, good. All, all right, right y'all. Bye. Peace.